In this lecture, we're going to cover descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics and distinguish between them. They're all part of the continuum of analytics, which includes descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. So let's start with that continuum of analytics. At the far end, you have descriptive analytics, which are the most basic. This is not to mean that they're not important, it's just that they're the easiest to calculate and they're based on past data. More advanced are the predictive analytics, and finally, the most advanced are prescriptive analytics, and arguably the most important for the company. An organization is truly advanced in terms of data analytics once they get to that prescriptive analytics side of the continuum. So let's start with descriptive analytics here. So this is at the far end of the continuum. So what are descriptive analytics? Well, they're really used to describe what has already happened in the past. So in other words, it's a snapshot of the past. It's based on prior data or past data that you've already collected that are likely part of your HR information system already. So examples include things like common HR metrics, like your turnover rate, yield ratio, cost per hire, and things like that, as well as common descriptive statistics. So measures of central tendency, like your mean, median, or mode, as well as measures of disperse, dispersion, such as variance, standard deviation, and or range. Now, often descriptive analytics are readily available based on the HR information system data, and therefore they're often included in HR dashboards too. Mainly because they're readily available, they're easy to display, and most people have a good understanding about what these mean, especially if it's things like the average age of employees or the turnover rate or something like that. So in terms of the process we use to actually analyze these data, it unfolds like this. We have our past data, perhaps they're already residing in our HR information system, we analyze that data, and then we have the results of those data as well. So some examples of descriptive analytics are, imagine a company where unit X showed a 34% turnover rate last year. Well, that's an example of descriptive analytics. Now, imagine another company where they're doing an employee survey and they find that 20% of survey respondents indicated that they were strongly considering leaving the company in the next six months. Another example of descriptive analytics. Or how about a company where based on a five point rating scale, subject matter experts or SMEs showed a lack of agreement on task criticality as part of a job analysis. And perhaps this was evidenced by a standard deviation of 2.1, which is a fairly large amount of dispersion for just a five point rating scale. Again, indicating that there's some lack of agreement between those subject matter experts. Finally, on average, employees used 15.3 days of PTO or paid time off last year. This would be another example of descriptive analytics because here we're using that descriptive statistic of the mean or the average to describe the data here. What these all have in common is they're based on prior past data. So let's move along on the continuum to something that I like to call predict-ish analytics. It's not quite predictive analytics yet, but it's definitely more advanced than what we typically think of when we're talking about descriptive analytics. So when we're talking about predict-ish analytics, we're talking about analytics that are used to predict what will happen in the future based on a snapshot of the past, but then we go further in terms of trying to make inferences based on the data. Now, we're not actually going the full, all the way along the continuum to predictive analytics because we're not actually verifying what happens in the, past, in the actual future, but we are taking the steps to make inferences about what happened in the past to try to make those predictions in the first place. We're just not verifying those predictions or seeing how accurate they were. So when we think about predictive analytics, we can think about many applications of inferential statistics where we're trying to make conclusions or draw inferences based on a sample of employees from a larger population of employees. Now, one of the methodological shortcomings of using predictish analytics without moving all the way to predictive analytics is we have this tendency to overfit our models, okay? So we make them maybe a little more complex than they should be based on the data, and then if we were to apply these hypothetically on a future set of data, it wouldn't actually fit that well, whatever model we derive from that initial set of data. So in other words, it makes it unlikely that those data or the model we developed are actually going to work well with new or future data. So in terms of how predictish analytics work and how the analytical process unfolds, it's something like this. We have our past data, and then we actually build a model as part of the analysis phase, and then we find our results based on the model that we built. And so the results are going to be perhaps the statistical significance test from our inferential statistic, maybe the practical significance and so forth. But the important thing to remember with predictish analytics is that we're only looking at prior data here. But again, we're trying to make generalized inferences about the underlying population from the sample of data from which we collected. So some examples of predictish analytics are 
perhaps a predictive validation design that showed that higher scores on the structured interview component of a selection battery were actually positively and significantly associated with higher job performance ratings based on a sample of job candidates slash employees once they become hired. Another example would be employees who participate in a new onboarding program and maybe we find that they're significantly more likely to stay in the company through their first 12 months if they did participate versus if they did not participate in that new onboarding program. This would be another example, especially if we used a inferential statistical test such as a t-test, perhaps an independent samples t-test here, to actually analyze the data and then from that we could derive a p-value which would be a significance test as well as infer using perhaps Cohen's D what the practical significance level is here. In other words, how big of a magnitude of an effect are we finding between people's performance or their, how many more people are likely to stay from the new onboarding training program versus those who are not part of the new onboarding training program. Okay, so now we're ready to move even further down this continuum to actual predictive analytics. Okay, so we're further down the continuum here. We're not quite to prescriptive analytics yet, but predictive analytics are an important foundation for engaging in prescriptive analytics. So let's start with predictive analytics here. So we're talking about predictive analytics. We're talking about being able to predict what will happen in the future based on available data, and then verifying how accurate those predictions are going to be based on a future data or new data that we might collect or new data that arrived to us. So we can use inferential statistics with some type of cross-validation process to do predictive analytics. We might use machine learning where we actually have a training set of data or multiple training sets of data and then a data set that is actually going to be our test data set where we actually test the model that we use to train the data on. And so these are some different ways that we can actually engage in predictive analytics. Also, we can use computational modeling and simulations as well to do predictive analytics as well where we can hypothesize what might happen in the future and then look to see, well, what would happen if maybe 10 years from now, if the current state of affairs plays out as we have modeled it, what is likely to happen? And we could use something like an agent-based simulation or agent-based model to actually look at that and to project into the future. So in terms of the predictive analytics process, here's how it typically unfolds. Unlike descriptive and predict-ish analytics, it's really a two-phase process. So first, we start with past data. Then we build some type of model, statistical model, mathematical model, computational model, and then we look at the results of that model based on those data. Then in phase two, we collect new data or multiple sets of new data, and we apply that model that we developed from phase one to those new data, and then we make predictions. And importantly, we then look and see, well, how accurate were our predictions that we made based on that model built during phase one, when we applied it to the new data from phase two. And in this way, we can see, did it really generalize and help us predict into the future? And this is a really, really valuable process. And so some examples of predictive analytics are as follows. Imagine you use something called a logistic regression model, and you show that engagement and performance are significant predictors of who will quit in the subsequent, subsequent six months. And then we take that model that we developed there, and then we use it with new data a new group of employees to see if we can use it to predict who's likely to turn over in the future within the, the next six months. And then we can evaluate based on the predictions we had from our original model with the new data we actually have where we do find out who actually ended up quitting in the first six months and we might find something like we find that the, the predictions are 85% accurate or we find a level of 85% accuracy based on our model and how when it was applied to the new set of data or future data. Another example would be a multiple linear regression model where we show that structured interview and work sample scores significantly predict job performance. Now, we could then do some cross-validation with new data where we take the model we developed in phase one where we find that structured interview and work samples significantly predict job performance and then apply that, say, regression model to a new data set and then we can see, well, how well do those two factors or those two selection tools of the structured interview and work sample scores actually do with the new data in terms of predicting job performance? And perhaps we find that the R squared or the variance explained is 15% in terms of job performance, in terms of how much variance is explained in job performance based on structured interview and work sample scores. So these are just a couple examples. There's many other different applications we could have in terms of what predictive analytics would look like in a human resource management context. 
Okay, so now it's time to move to the furthest end of the continuum, which is where we get to prescriptive analytics. So it's all the way at the end, which means it's one of the most advanced forms of analytics that we can do. And this is typically the hardest point for companies to reach is actually engaging in true prescriptive analytics. As the name implies, we're really prescribing action based on analytics. So in other words, we use data to predict what will happen in the future based on those available data, and then we verify how accurate those predictions are, are based on new or future data. So in other words, we've just done predictive analytics, and then we take an extra step and we prescribe action based on those predictions. So the process might unfold like this. We have three phases now. First phase, you have your past data, you build your mathematical, or computational, or statistical model, then you have your preliminary results based on those data, and then you take that model you built from phase one and you apply it to new data from phase two, and then you see how accurate your predictions actually were based on that model from phase one. And then you have a third phase where you move on and you take those predictions and you come up with some kind of action. Okay, so let's look at some examples or one specific example to make this a little bit more clear. So let's use that example we used before with predictive analytics where we have that logist logistic regression model that shows that engagement and performance are significant predictors of who would quit over the subsequent six months. Okay, and so if you recall, the model predicted future turnover with new data with 85% accuracy. Now we can now take prescriptive action by deciding, well, how are we actually going to take those findings and do something actionable to actually affect engagement and performance as we've determined that those are actually key drivers of who's going to stay and who's going to leave? Well, first, with regard to engagement, perhaps we take what we know about job redesign and we'd redesign the jobs to improve engagement. Perhaps we add more autonomy to the jobs, greater task significance, greater task identity, and so on. And then we could also, with regard to increasing performance, as that was another significant driver of who's going to stay or who's going to quit, we might decide to train managers on how to deliver feedback to improve that performance. So those are just a couple steps we could take to actually prescribe action or turn those predictive analytics into something that's actionable. And this is where the most value is going to be for the company, is when you actually take that final step and you tell specifically what you're going to do based on the data. So just to sum up, we talked about the continuum of analytics that ranges from descriptive to predictish to predictive to prescriptive analytics. And they start with the most basic level with descriptive analytics where we're describing what's happened in the past. Predictive analytics goes a little bit further or a lot further in some cases by actually taking what we've learned in the past and then applying whatever model we developed to a new set of data to try to make predictions into the future and then to see how accurate those predictions actually were based on that model we used with the old data. And then finally, we're ready to get prescriptive analytics when we actually want to prescribe action based on those predictive analytics. So that wraps up the lecture on descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics.